G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Karma 45. This is a weapon mod that has been ported from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare into Fallout 4, and it comes with custom sounds and animations. And look at this thing. It's just a Chris Vector with two magazines and two barrels, which is actually reflected in the behavior of the weapon, but it's a little bit funky. But the Karma 45 is a bit of a weird one for me. Not because it's a, you know, a two-magged Chris Vector, but... It's just, it's a bit weird how Bethesda would have, um, you know, they took down Junkmaster the other day because of, you know, ported assets or these assets are way too close to what Bethesda has in other games, but they allow, like, direct recreations, ripping the assets from a Call of Duty game, porting them into Fallout 4. At least the Nexus does, so it's just a weird inconsistency there. I don't, I don't really see how they're super different, but... That aside, let's get into the attachments, and the attachments here, a lot of them are based off, like, Call of Duty perks, so it's going to be kind of funky, but the receivers here have, well, you're just gonna have to see it, because you can do this, or this, or this, and then it goes back to normal with this one and this one, so, yeah, we won't be using these things, because I like to keep my retinas intact, thank you very much. But you'll notice how they also give you these random perks, which aren't explained here, but we'll go, um, there's like a little perk slot for you to chuck in things, so, you know, it'll all be revealed. So we've got Phobos and Deimos, which I think are the moons on Mars, am I correct there? And then just the basic. The uh, Phobos has more range, which is good, and, um, this thing has extra fire rate and more range, despite having a shorter barrel. Alright, oh. I don't see anything wrong with it if you don't. Alright, so we can do the sights. You can chuck on Demus' iron sights or the Phobos ones to match whichever variant you pick up. So, sure, we might as well grab Demos and, you know, Phobos. And then we'll grab uh, just a random, just a standard Karma 45 here. Got a reflex light. Definitely look looking like it's some sort of uh, aesthetic from Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Yeah, I don't really like the weapons in that game and, like, their art direction. It's just a little bit too much, I think. It's like, <laughs> you've made an abomination of a weapon here, Call of Duty. Is it Treyarch who made it? I think it's Treyarch. Um, or is it Infinity Ward? Someone, the, either one of those companies makes all the bad ones. Someone keeps making uh, um, Call of Duty Black Ops over and over. And, you know, good old Black Ops, nothing beats that. And there's a few of these as well, including Thermals, which is great. But we'll just go for a Reflex Sight, because this thing being a close quarters shredder... Um, well, a scope would be pushing it a little bit. And did I speak about the functionality between the magazines and the barrels? Basically, this thing fires two projectiles per shot. That either means it's got the, um, two-shot legendary just sort of in the background, or it fires two projectiles and the uh, base damage has been brought up to match that. Alright, so we've got the reflex side on, and you can have some attachments, including a stock. I think we've already got one. We've got a laser sight here, which helps us with our hip by accuracy, quick jaw for faster grip, custom grip for aiming faster, more quicker down sights, basically. Not super useful. We've got FMJ for increased bullet penetration, so possibly the, um, the penetrating legendary effect, although it does cost us some range, although it gives us better accuracy. That's kind of interesting. Extended mags, which is not reflected in the size of the magazines, but it'll increase our size of magazines there. Rifled barrel gives us a lot better range and better accuracy, which seems to be the better thing to do here, but we've got an advanced foregrip, which will help reduce recoil as well, and a suppressor. We're going to do that, because why not? We'll get one with Ace Operator going just to boost its damage a little bit further, but the rest of the ones I grab will not be suppressed, so uh, let's move on. We've got candy perks. You can have bang bangs, which double your bullets, double your fun. Uh, it does double the rate of fire, I guess. And this one, Bomb Stoppers, probably Explosive Legendary Effect. Deadeye, probably the Deadeye Legendary Effect from Far Harbor. M Mule Munchies, sometimes you need a third hand, no clue what that's supposed to mean. Reload and a Flash, obviously fast to reload. Racing Stripes is a reference to an 80s song, a one-hit wonder, I guess. And this one says punch him in the face, so probably increase bash damage. And Tough Enough gives you more health. And all of these are purchased for bottle caps, which is kind of interesting. Let's go... Let's do, let's do that one. We want to be accurate with this thing, damn it. And you can put a charm on it. It doesn't have any physics, but it's there. 
just good for a teddy bear, I guess. Why not? And you can have a calling card on the side, which, you know, puts a little decal there like you would with a Call of Duty thing where you... Can you make your own things and that? I don't know. Let's go fire skulls. That's edgy. And you can have factory material or bad, bad, no. Uh, that one's not too bad, but... Yeah, all of these are... No. Look, they might work in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, but... Okay, now we're getting better. Mars Eternum. Hey, did... Did Lenius make this mod? And, yeah, look, these aren't particularly great, to be honest. I'm not really a fan of this garish uh, textures, so... Rather than assaulting your eyeballs every time I hold this weapon in first person, I'm gonna leave it. Damage slider is there if the damage isn't quite doing it for you. Legendary effect as well. Alright, let's get started. Oh wait, bomb stoppers is probably something to do with taking less damage from explosions. Okay, so I've just been messing around with this thing a little bit, trying to figure out whether it's actually a two-shot legendary effect, and it seems to be able to fire in two-round bursts mostly, but if you get the single shot out, I think um, you actually get the one bullet, and if I slow down time a little bit, um, we can actually observe this thing firing the one bullet. And if I hold down the trigger, it'll fire two really quickly, then pause for a second. So, ooh, that's a really cool firing system. That's interesting. Okay, so here we are in Gunners Plaza, and this is the Karma 45 in first person. Looks pretty good. We'll just uh, sneak a bullet into the wall there. And there's your reload animation. Your sprinting animation looks like this. And your bashing animation pulls a knife from your anus so you can stab people with it. Very, very nicely done. I'm liking it so far. But how does it go in terms of damage? Let's find out, shall we? <laughs> well, that's a good start, isn't it? Noticing the accuracy of this thing isn't great, but with the 4.4 times sneak multipliers, things seem to be going well. Quickly peek around that corner, see if we can't do this without being spotted. If we do get made, however, I'll just bring out the... Um, the uh, other ones, the other ones that aren't suppressed because, you know, stealth won't be an option as much anymore. I think that micro-bursting it like you would with a Battlefield 3 ASL seems to be the way to do it. And even when we're in caution, and or not in caution, and in combat, this thing can still shred because you get a lot of bullets out very quickly, which you can zero in on the head with because this thing has pretty good hipfire accuracy. We'll just, uh, I think the jig is up by now, so there we go. This thing sounds a little bit different. What? A really beefy, actually, loud and proud. <laughs> that gunner must have really loved that turret because she saw that it was dead. Damn it! <laughs> Alright, so, yeah, I'm not thinking this thing is going to be the best at ranges further than this. And there's a lot of muzzle drift with this thing, too, so look out for that. But we can counter that using a bit of good old-fashioned VATS usage. Bit of gun foo happening. Let's see how we go. Is that a two round burst in VATS? You know what? That's pretty awesome. It, yeah, that was definitely a three banger. It is a. Okay, so it is automatic, but it, it's weird in burst. Wait, was that kind of teabagging? Okay, I lost my train of thought there, but yeah, it, it is a very, very quick three round burst, which I guess, you know, makes sense. Although I. I was looking at this thing online. I found the wiki for Call of Duty, and they said it's got an 800. Like per minute rate of fire. I was like, what? I'm fairly certain that the single barreled Chris Vector has something more than that. Oh, a gamma gun. You can stop that now. I'm fairly certain attacking me with radiation is, is war crimes. Bad. Don't do it. Oh, so I put a. I put a little octopus thing because it, it was an option. So I thought, yeah, you might as well excite some of those Japanese people if they happen to be watching my video. Sorry, people from Japan, but stereotypes exist for a reason. This one has the advanced foregrip and the uh, thing that gives it extra rate of fire, and it is a... It's shredding. Would like a little bit more bullets in a magazine, but the reload is fast enough that it's not a problem most of the time. So, yeah, Karma 45 from uh, Call of Duty has uh, taught everything in Fallout 4 a lesson, hasn't it? Let's move on. Should probably show you these things, what they look like in third person, right? Because that kind of matters, and looks pretty good. 
holding it in a position where it doesn't look too uncomfortable. The uh, foregrip there is a little bit munted, but obviously it's using just the standard animations. This one works quite a lot better, but obviously that funky foregrip uh, shape doesn't really lend well to the uh, the uh, vertical grip right there, because that's the animations that it uses, but I think it looks pretty decent. Righto, so Swan's over there fighting some probably Rust Devils, so we'll just take out old mate over here who... Wait, wait. I think the Super Mutant Suicider has run off, but I'm thinking with this, I'm just going to mag dump the wall, not trying to control recoil at all. I mean, that's pretty high, right? But what if I just... If I just spam the trigger like that, like I'm firing a goddamn Battlefield 3 and 4 SKS, I'm thinking I can just control the recoil better without compromising too much on, um, I guess, accuracy and DPS. I mean, it will be slightly more accurate because I'm not letting that spread bloom out, but with targets as big as this fella, probably won't matter all that much, but I'm going to try to put it into practice anyway. Eh, uh, maybe not. Fortunately for me, he's just kind of standing there like an idiot, so he'll take it. I'm actually kind of glad that it's not the two-shot legendary effect because I'd only be getting half the damage as I am now because, you know... If you're firing two projectiles per shot, it's going to be splitting that damage between the two projectiles, and you know, you'd have taken twice as long there. And so, yeah, I thought it was a rust devil. Still got the flaming sword on this one. A Soltron Gorgon. Is that like some sort of monster? I shot that ghoul because I wanted to, and he deserved it because he's a ghoul. Okay, let's move on. Also, really animation in third person. I actually think it's better in third person. Okay, so here we are outside of the General Atomics Galleria. See, there's the giant Mr. Handy monster thing. But the real monster we'll be facing over here is this giant goddamn wasp who gives me a hernia every time I fight the bastard because no matter what I do, he's just he's just so goddamn strong that and so fast that he just detects you as soon as you start shooting at him. Although, that's some good sneak criticals right there. Although, I'm thinking we didn't get that second one. No, uh, it's a 4.4. Okay. So, we're doing okay here, but once he detects you, he'll get on top of you, and he'll eat your ass until your head caves in. Luckily, we got concentrated fire up and up, and look at that damage we're getting. 20? 20? That ain't gonna fly. So, what I'll do is this. <laughs> right, Carla. And now we're buffed up on everything under the goddamn sun, and we're still not doing all that much damage, as it turns out. Is that a double hit? No, it wasn't, but... What I could probably fix for is some jet right now, but this guy... Oh, there. Yeah. I think I was faring slightly better against him when I was doing that video with the FNX the other day. I thought this would smash him, but... We don't seem to be doing enough damage to make it work, unfortunately. And luckily for me, every time he hits me, he's not going to give me any poison damage over time. Because, uh, you see, this fella is, uh, well, Medex pretty much counters all poison damage over time. Ah, there we go. That was, um, what's it called, uh... Destroyer of Acadia. <laughs> 924 damage. Well, we had to go to Nerd Raid to do it and buffed up on all these cams, but job's a job, and I think that's about enough from the uh, Karma 45. It has been an interesting weapon to use. A couple of things that work about this, I think, and sort of don't work as the unique sort of perks that you can add to this, like Call of Duty. But uh, in terms of its performance, it could probably do better. And I think that those Call of Duty perks, also they add unique quirks to the thing, don't do enough to increase this thing's performance. You can do well with this thing, but against vanilla things for sure. So, you know, if you're not really in the game for hunting and killing giant monsters like that, you'll be fine. But maybe I'm not complaining about anything that needs to be fixed. For weapon in this game, I feel like it is fairly on par with what you'd see in the base game anyway, so it's not going to be overpowering everything and breaking the game balance, so for that, it's good, but, you know, sometimes you just want a little bit more punch with this thing, and I guess we've got the damage slider there, which I completely forgot about, but, you know, 
I've got really nothing to say other than with other than its performance is uh, pretty good actually. Considering that we can just you know give this thing up to 90% more damage, kind of eliminates that whole argument. So, how does the weapon feel? Is it good to use? And I would say, yeah. Go ahead and download it if you're a big Call of Duty fan and have played Infinite Warfare. Although that thing got trashed because it was released around Battlefield 1, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, if you didn't find yourself enjoying that game, would like to see something from that, port it into Fallout 4 with a seemingly... It's, it's a good port. It's decent. Try it out if you're interested. Link will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching, guys.